Hey there. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is live. This live. is what you get. It's live. <laughs> Today is Wednesday. And we're here to do our Q&A. Yes, we are. Just like happy we do New on Year. Wednesdays. Yes, Happy New Year. <laughs> um, I'm Eric Griffin, president of ITM Trading. I have Lynette Zhang with me, our chief market analyst. And for those of you who don't know or are tuning in for the first time, we take your questions that you submit to us via email at questions at itmtrading.com. And we put them up here on a screen and we ask them live so you get a real, true, spontaneous, organic response. You ready? I am <clears throat> so ready. All right. And what an interesting year 2023 is promising to be, but go ahead. All right, so Robert D asks, when the reset happens, how long after the reset would banks reset all debt, i.e. mortgages, car loans, credit cards, Am I understanding this correctly, that after the reset, I would pay off all debt with the revalued gold and silver? So on the first part, as we're going into hyperinflation, they're probably going to, uh, at that point, if we use Mexico as an example, <laughs> they start to change all of the um, variable rate contracts. Uh, so I, I can't tell you exactly how long, um, but probably within like a nine month period ish is when they would fully reset all of the contracts. So some of that's going to start as we're in hyperinflation. And the answer is yes, you are understanding that correctly. Probably not silver because you carry a whole lot more bang for your buck in gold, but absolutely because when they do that overnight revaluation, they take the fiat money that has really no intrinsic value and they revalue it against gold. And there's that window that we can grab however many ounces of gold that we need to, boom, pay off your mortgage, any fixed rate debt. So okay. yes, you are understanding that right, Robert. All right, so Gary D asks, I'm 56 years old and would like to cash in my IRA, pay the taxes and buy physical gold. Since you have done this before. Mm -hmm. I have. Did you ever feel nervous about your decision? No, not at all. Because what <coughs> I know is that I am holding my retirement money in the absolute safest thing that I can do at this point in time. And we've, that's, that's the direction you have to go in because the system is falling apart. So you get to safety and then as the opportunities to convert that gold into income producing assets occurs, then you start to shift that. Now on the other side of this mess, you have your income set for your retirement and you can't outlive it. So why do you say you can't outlive it? Well, you can't, uh, okay, so when I first became a stockbroker back in the 80s, if you were getting 10% on government bonds, right? So you could put in your principal, and you and most people did this, they'd put in their principal, and essentially if you had enough, which was substantial because you were getting 10%, you could live off the interest. So we never talked about anybody <laughs> outliving their IRA or their retirement fund okay. because we were getting enough interest on it. Right. But these days, uh, from what I hear, like from my ex-husband's, you know, the feedback that I get from that, quite honestly, his broker said, well, yeah, you, you'll, you have enough to make it till you're 88. Well, what happens if you live past 88, right? Because what you're really doing now, especially in this low interest rate environment, mm -hmm. is in order to sustain a reasonable standard of living between the low interest rates and the inflation, is you have to use up your principal. Mm. So therefore, depending upon, you know, for most people, what they have, they will more than likely outlive the retirement funds. In our strategy, where you then convert it into like, say, income producing real estate, right? As long as you're holding on to the real estate and the real estate is generating income for you, why would you sell it? You wouldn't. So then you simply pass it down to your heirs, but you're not outliving that because you're not using up the principal. Does that make sense? Yeah, so you're saying that after when the reset happens and you utilize the gold to buy income producing assets, now you're not, you're able to sustain through the rest of your life with that. Exactly, <clears throat> and you don't have to use up the principal. Got it. All right, so 
Matthew M. asks, to avoid CBDCs, can't we just all go to the bank and close out our accounts and get cash? Well, you can at this moment, uh, but will that avoid the CBDCs? If, if they actually do indeed push that through, which is what they're working so hard on, and that is the only legal tender, no, you can't avoid them because you're going to have to use that. N number one, you're going to have to take it for salary or however that you're going to get generate your money because everything's got to flow through the system. And you're going to have to use it as a tool of barter. If you hold cash outside of the system, I mean, there's only three cents officially, three cents worth of purchasing power left on that cash. So when we from enter- From the original dollar from 1913. Correct. <clears throat> so, so now you're thrilled. <laughs> Sorry. You say that though, and a lot of people know what you're talking about because they've been around for a long time, but. Oh no, I any appreciate new, Any new people are like, what does she mean? The only three cents left of the purchasing power. Right. Um, so if you hold it in cash, then when we go into, when, when everybody loses confidence in the currency, which we are in that direction, very close, then that cash has absolutely zero purchasing power value. You got to have some for your first line of defense. But after, like, if you take a look at Venezuela or Argentina or, you know, any countries that are in hyperinflation mode, the vendors or whoever you're buying your stuff from, unless they're government agencies, frankly, they don't want the cash. In fact, it was Egypt just today that is in their third massive revaluation, not overnight, like thousand percent. And I haven't finished reading the article yet because it just came up this morning. But in Egypt, um, their currency is now in its third revaluation, I think they said in the last six months. Don't hold me to that. You can you can search that. Uh, so when the cash loses value, if you're sitting in it, it's a losing proposition. Now, if you hold gold over here, since that's good money and it holds its purchasing power value over time, and especially when they do that revaluation, now you take a little bit of the gold and you convert it into the CBDCs to buy what you need to buy or pay those bills that you can only do with the legal money of the state, but you're holding your purchasing powers value intact. And you're also protecting whatever wealth you're choosing to leave inside of the system or that you have in cash. I mean, we have the calculations to figure out the most likely amount that you need to recoup any of those losses. So this one's good. I like this. So Tracy T says, in regard to the CBDCs, we see the problem. What is the solution for stopping them? Well, there's, there's the main way that you can stop them when you stop and think about how we really vote, we vote with our purses. So if you buy into the fiat system, that's your vote. My vote goes into physical gold and silver that is outside of the system. And then if enough of us make that vote, then they're going to have a hard time pushing the CBDs through, CBDCs through. So that's how we stop them. We come together in community and we, we take the money that's in the system, we pull it out of the system and we put it into the only financial asset that runs no counterparty risk, the only one. You stay in counterparty risk, that's your vote. <clears throat> yeah, I definitely, that's a tough one. Because you're right in the sense that if everybody, you know, if no one invested in stocks, bonds, bank accounts, put it in gold and silver, it would seem to me though that the very next thing would be like, oh, we're just outlaw, we're just outlaw gold and silver now. Well, they're probably going to yeah. do that. You're absolutely and then right just, about that. You know, force us into CBDCs regardless. Well, they can. Well, then it depends on the kind of gold and silver that you buy. Yeah, me. Because yeah, you yeah, have yeah, to. Yeah. You have to keep that in mind. <laughs> My uncle had at least three thousand ounces when and in legally that he could use in the normal marketplace, even if he had to convert them into the dollars, right? Uh, but it was legal for him because he did what the guys that write the laws do. So that's all you gotta do. 
Yeah, time will tell on that one. Yes. All right, so Indeed. Estella T asks, so if you have a gold coin, how are you going to buy a loaf of bread? Are you going to chip the, the coin? Are you going to chip some off the coin? Well, I mean, you could do that, but uh, if I'm going to buy a loaf of bread, number one, I'm not going to do it with gold. I'm going to do it with silver. Number two, I'm going to have a variety of sizes so that whatever my need is, whether it's a loaf of bread or, or it's even a new property to generate income or whatever, I'm going to make sure, and I have made sure, it's not I'm going to, I have made sure that whatever it is that I need to purchase, I have the right kind of gold and silver to make that purchase. So, you know, and even when you're looking at this, could I cut this watch apart? Sure I could, if I needed to, but I would much rather have a dime, a silver dime that I could use. So it's always the right tool for the job. It's always the right tool for the job. Uh, say, okay, some live questions here. So Daniel K asks, why is the U.S. Mint not producing enough silver eagles to meet demand? Isn't that illegal? No, well, I don't think that's illegal. Well, it's not illegal. It's not illegal, <clears> but <throat> if they are not minting enough to, uh, producing enough to meet demand, it's because they don't have the blanks. And it's probably also one of the reasons why the SLV ETF changed their prospectus because they couldn't get enough silver to meet the demand. So they just changed the prospectus and said, okay, all it has to do is mirror this and it doesn't matter whether or not we have enough silver underneath. So it's the same reason because in the physical world, whether it's gold or silver, there is a finite amount of it. And what we've been seeing in the <coughs> physical world <coughs> is definitely demand yeah. has been exceeding supply. And so, you know. And for a while. And for a while. And that's not going to change especially when you look at central banks that are buying up more gold. And we, had, we don't know fourth quarter yet because it just ended. But we'll probably have that data in another month, probably. But, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I certainly that's why. Thought, they don't I, have them. I certainly thought silver demand would have equalized a lot sooner. I mean, we're, we've been talking about this supply and demand issue on silver now for we're coming well, up on since, three years. I was just going to say that was really, since. you know, where premiums have been elevated on the physical because it's just not enough of it. And, you know, there was recently a very large order, yes, a large order for uh, Silver Eagles from one single cl customer that oh. uh, stripped out a large portion of the supply of the Silver Eagle market. So Silver Eagles especially are in short supply and that's why the premiums are so high. And I think that's why a lot of people have been looking to other uh, mints for their silver needs, not not as much towards the silver eagles, until at least that supply demand imbalance rebalances itself. If, if it does. <clears throat> well, I think on the right? silver eagles, unless the unless people just keep pushing the demand for silver eagles, but I think the silver eagles once once that catches up, because there was that massive amount that was pulled out of the market with that one deal. Um, I think once that that at least uh, levels well, itself out, it doesn't mean, I'm not saying that it'll go back to the way it was, right, prior to March of 20, but, you know, I think it'll, the premiums at least come down some on the silver eagle portion to match more of what the rest of the silver market really looks like. Well, what does the rest of the silver, because he, Eric works more in that. I don't really work in that yeah. area, but how about for like junk silver? How's the market for junk oh, silver? Oh, the premiums are up across the board. Don't get me wrong, across the board. It's just that silver eagles jumped up even more in premium compared to the rest of the market. Do you know kind of where, uh, I mean, where's, where are the, where is an eagle versus the spot market? Uh, I mean, we could look because right everybody now. really okay because everybody always wants to buy it at spot. Well, you can't because spot is a contract; it's not real. Doesn't really reflect yeah, it's not that the physical it's just market. <coughs> um, excuse me. Great. <laughs> well, maybe I shouldn't have asked that question, but yeah, we're the talking internet about this the internet's market. slow. It's probably because we're streaming right now, so it's not wanting to up as fast. Uh, what was the question? Something about spot. Where's spot right now on silver? And and what are the premiums? What what do people have to pay? 
You know what? I should go into a different category for that. So here we go. Silver Eagle coins. Edgar, can you pull up spot? I can grab spot really quick. Okay. Give me a second. Uh, 2022. Yeah. So Silver Eagles, $40.81. Oh, my gosh. Silver spot is twenty three eighty five. It's massive, yeah. right? Yeah. So people <coughs> thinking, I don't know why they still believe Wall Street, but okay. So people looking at the spot market, you know, and then if they go to buy silver, like wow. Seeing a silver maple leaf still elevated, right? Right. But I at thirty two dollars. So uh, roughly so eight dollars more dollars. to get a silver, silver eagle, eagle than a Canadian silver maple leaf. Interesting. Even okay. though the silver maples are still elevated compared to where they have been in the past, or where spot is. Right. Yeah. So I mean, it's just. I mean, the physical world will show you true even supply rounds, and demand. This. So even, even rounds. Even rounds. Where are rounds? Even rounds. Thirty dollars. Wow. Right. Yep. When wow. they used to be, when they would used to be at spot with twenty four, probably somewhere around. Twenty five fifty or something like that. Yeah, there used right? to be very yeah, and that is all a reflection <laughs> of real demand and real supply. Uh, Pretty simple. Okay. Gosh. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Another live question. RL asks, which one will come first, the chicken or the egg? <laughs> I mean, uh, the collapse, collapse or the digital currency. Well, they've already started to introduce the digital currency, but where yeah. they're going to get it injected into the system is during the next collapse. And they're going to tell you, look, I mean, everybody's already got accounts with the central bank, whether we realize it or not is not relevant, but you'll know it then because even when they were injecting all the money during the uh, pandemic, you know, would they say, oh, it would be so much easier if everybody had an account and all they had to do was push a button and we could immediately fund that account. So we already have the digital currency in, in a test mode, but where it's going to get broadly used and for them, hopefully broad acceptance is going to be during uh, the next crisis. Hmm. So you don't think that... Because what you said right there is an easy way to get it to be adopted. You well, know, at least even, they think it even is. Even before, right, even before, you know, you make it the the cool thing to do and you make it... Well, that's what they've done. Right, that's what I'm saying, though. But yeah. I'm saying they could very much easily push it out before a collapse by, you know, spinning it in these beautiful ways that you just spun it, Right. Well, understand that that, what I think is very interesting <laughs> is that that's been the big global test and they've had trouble in getting people to adopt it. So there, it's, not, it's not going as easily as they wanted it to go, but if you're in crisis mode and you're freaking out and all of a sudden you don't have any money, but hey, the government just gave you a whole bunch of digital money, but you have to spend it within a certain time frame or it goes away, et cetera, et cetera. The problem is, will the public then take the fiat money that they have and convert it into that? Will they accept, how quickly will they accept this new system? So yeah, I mean, they're, they're going to get broad base use when people are freaked out during the next crisis. That's their best shot. Um, right. Unless they want to mandate it. <clears throat> Right. And if they mandate it, then we know things are different and that makes it harder for people to accept. They've got to make it seem like it's your choice. They're being wonderful to you. They're giving you all of this free money. So it's your choice to take it. And then certainly a very easy way to do it. Right. I can well, see your angle. Minute. You have the <clears throat> you have the uh, the crisis. We're going to do stimulus. You can get the stimulus if you have the CBDCs. Right. right? Well, that, that is the stimulus. And then if it's you don't, not an option. You can't have it. Right. It's your choice. Uh, uh, yeah. Hmm. And by the way, if the issue, which it probably will be, is around inflation and hyperinflation, they told you how they were going to sell it. That if they are controlling the CBDCs, there will be no inflation. 
No, there won't be inflation. There will be massive deflation because they're going to push interest rates really low. But they also told us that what would they would do is have their finger on that button on the valuation of the CBDCs and interest rates 24-7. Oh, that makes me feel really good. <laughs> Are you freaking kidding me? They've done such a great job driving us into a wall. Let them control it second by second. That's what they want to do. I mean, they're telling us, so do what I say and not what I do. When, when what they do <clears throat> supports what they say, then you know it's the truth. When what they do is completely opposite to what they say, like they don't want you to buy gold, but boy, they're buying more than they ever have, then you know they're lying. So this one's interesting. NW asks, why doesn't the IRS accept gold and silver coins for us to pay taxes? Well, they definitely don't want you to think of gold and silver as a currency or as real money. So they certainly wouldn't accept it. Wouldn't you agree? A hundred percent. Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> they, they want, they've been training us for years to not believe that gold and silver are real, real money. Disconnect it from the past hundreds, thousands of years of history. We're just going to erase that completely. I remember um, Ron Paul years ago was when Ben Bernanke was the Fed chair and asked him point blank in yeah. a hearing, uh, well, if gold and, gold and silver aren't real money, then why does the central bank buy it? Why does the Fed buy it? Oh, oh uh, tradition. It's yeah. tradition. It's tradition. Right. You know, <laughs> it was also interesting when Arizona, you were, there are a number of states that have passed laws making gold and silver legal tender. And um, again, just going back to Ron Paul in front of the Arizona Senate when they were giving him a hard time. And I mean, so eloquent because he's like, you don't tax money, but you tax this. And I, I can't actually, if anybody wants that clip, I have the link to it and I can't remember it off the top of my head now, but it was powerful and it was fabulous. So let your consultant know and then we'll send you that clip and you can see the whole thing. Ron Paul, brilliant man, brilliant, brilliant. All right, well, that's all the questions we have for today. Do you have any, what do you got coming? I know 2023 is 2023 is, <coughs> yeah, 2023 is a really interesting year. But yesterday I did a piece that I'd been wanting to do for a very, very, very long time on, um, you know, I mean, there are different sets of rules for people that are very, very wealthy, very, very wealthy, and then the rest of us. So I got to do a piece on pledging and how billionaires can fund their lifestyle without having to pay taxes by pledging the shares of stock that they, that they own. But that is a super hidden danger because we're not even seeing the tip of the iceberg since these transactions are mostly invisible and private. Right? So like Elon Musk has pledged 92% of his shareholdings. And then, and then basically he takes debt against it. Correct. So then the, and the debt's not taxable. The debt is not taxable. But then, so how does that work when his, when the value of the Tesla stock's gone so, down so much? Voila. That's what creates, creates <clears> forced <throat> sales. So you are sitting in Tesla stock in your 401k or your IRA or your mutual funds or ETFs because remember we've talked about herding and how there's just a handful of stocks and air, all of these funds are buying these stocks which pushes the price up a lot. Well, now we're in the deleveraging mode and the forced sales that are that could come from this could indeed collapse and overwhelm the markets. Mm. And we don't even see it because it's, again, it's, it's hidden from us. But you know that old saying, if I owe you a thousand bucks, I have a problem. But if I owe you a million bucks, you have that problem. So that's, that's really what we're looking at here is we, Elon Musk or any of those billionaires that have done that, okay, you have the problem. They don't have the problem because what are they going to do? They right. spent that money. It's gone. You can't get blood from a stone. Interesting. So, yeah. So I, I've been wanting to do that piece for a very, very, very long time. And with everything that's going on in the markets now, it made sense to do. So you don't want to miss that. That just came out yesterday. Um, what's to come in 2023? We, we've got a lot that's going on. So what's, what are we playing on Thursday? Edgar. Um, FDIC video we filmed yesterday. 
Oh. Oh. We did an FDIC video yesterday. I don't know. You must have. <laughs> we must have. Well, tune in and be surprised, but it's a good one. Because you'll be you're surprised, too. <laughs> I, you know, I mean, it's just when I finish one, I start the next one, yep. like, immediately. <clears throat> So it's sometimes, honestly, it's hard for me to necessarily remember. But I was just talking about that one. Do you one remember with, doing it? Oh, I remember doing it. Yes, I definitely remember. I remember creating it. And I remember doing it. But I don't remember what it was now. And, he, and Edgar didn't put it on the list. All right. Well, the FDIC <laughs> one's coming up. Okay. Uh, I said that like you do. Coming, coming up. up. Coming up. <laughs> yes. But remember, you can also listen to all of these videos on any major podcast platform, Apple or Spotify. If you leave us a review, we would really appreciate it. And if you like this, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, share, share, share. Sharing is probably the most important thing because we've got to build this community. And, you know, when people walk around with a normalcy bias, well, ignorance doesn't make you immune. It just leaves you vulnerable. And, you know, those guys are rich enough. They have stolen enough of your wealth. Why let them take more? Why? Can't imagine. So if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you hit that bell. And uh, we'll let you know when we're going on air. And until next we meet, Happy New Year. And please be safe out there. Bye-bye.